attention, human scum, and listen up to the latest episode of Who Corner to Corner Podcast. In tonight's episode, Fleet Marshal Paul, that's me, and Field Major Jeff, that's the Buffon fellow in the middle, are joined by an unknown actor of uh, some little renown. We've never even heard of him before, but apparently he's rather good in certain circles. The actor's name is Mr. Dan Starkey. <laughs> good evening. Remain calm, Good human evening, scum. sir. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, oh, right, get, get out of that now. I was, I was going to say, thank you for joining us, Dan Starkey. And please ignore everything I said in that last one. I was just doing character. <laughs> oh, just, how do you do it? Seriously. How? Yeah, how do you do it? Sometimes I take, uh, I take cough syrup into the studio. So it's kind of a... Do yes, you really? Yes, really absolutely. <laughs> and warm up. Brilliant. Yeah, mm. it's a good idea, isn't it? Mm. You know, yeah. Um, Dan, thank you for joining us on the podcast tonight. We are absolutely delighted uh, on, a, on a quite an extreme scale of one to mm. several billion uh, to have you join us. Uh, yet uh, another Doctor Who luminary of some <laughs> win- uh, renown and standing to, uh, on, on the yeah. podcast, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's great. Yeah, very exciting to have you here. So thanks for taking the, the time to do it. So like Paul said, we've got a load of questions we tonight. We literally have and three we, questions. So. Yeah. Three, it's more than three. I can only, Sontarans yeah, can only count up to three. It's very useful for them. Number of fingers. Number of fingers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm going to open with um, a, a quite a big question, quite a tough one for <laughs> you. Okay. Straight so what's it like being a Sontaran? <laughs> It's a, it's a delight. It's, uh, it's marvellous to be part of a <laughs> genocidal clone race intent on uh, destroying the enemies, crushing <laughs> them beneath their feet and uh, yeah, conjuring the, the known galaxy and into the universe. But uh, they're great fun. They're, uh, they're, they're good. I, uh, well, just simply, you know, when I was doing Strax, you know, having mm. wonderful lines written by Stephen Moffat and sort of uh, being threatening, getting to do my own stunts and also making people laugh. It's a wonderful combination of things. So, yeah. <laughs> the only drawback is three hours of being glued into it. But, uh, yeah, that's a small price yeah. to pay. Yes, yeah. So did did that side of things get, uh, you know, quicker o- over time? You know, you hear like, um, you know, Dave Bautista Ooh. when he's playing Drax, oh, for right. example, you yeah. know, it, it used to take hours for, for the in the first Guardians film and then they got it down by half on the third one and stuff, but he's still standing there for hours getting, yeah. you know, suited up. So did they speed your process Yes, and up? certainly they're, 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 they're gets, they, they get used to the process, so it does speed up a bit. But there's, mm. ultimately there are some things which it just takes as long as it takes. And inevitably, the first thing which yeah, happens yeah. when you get stuff glued on your face, it just it's dependent, not just... It's just on the day, it can be very different. If it's a hot day, you know, then you'll perspire. You know, if it's a cold day, other things will happen. You know, it's basically, as soon as it's glued onto your face, it wants to slide off it. So then it's the prosthetics yeah, team's job yeah. to keep on gluing it on. <laughs> so as you can imagine, if, if the thing is, if you're called to set at 8 o'clock in the morning, as you would do, so mm-hmm. you get in the chair for 5, so it's, you know, it all sort of works back, yeah. and then you're not used until 10, as it sort of happens, because every day on a, on a TV or film set, it's, it's, it's very practical, it's, it's problem solving. You've got to wait around, wait around, wait around. You block it at 8 o'clock, but then you're not used until, you know, for another three hours. It'll have sort of like started to migrate slowly southward. So um, yeah, so it's kind of um, it's it's it, 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 it's a prolonged process, and then after lunch as well, they're, they're, yeah. they've got to do an entire repatch job. So it's kind of a yes. So yeah, you don't yeah. 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 that um, that image is giving me an idea for a story. You know, some sort of Sontaran Sontar horror where the faces are what, the final bit of the Indiana Jones. Yes, Sontaran yes. horror yes. face. Readers of the Lost Sontaran <laughs> arc. Yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> mm. Good one. <laughs> that, that must be kind of weird. Actually, that, that must take a, a, a bit of mental training, mm. I would imagine, because I would feel horribly enclosed and cl- slightly claustrophobic mm. yeah, by it's, having a massive potato glued onto my head. It's not too bad, in the, with the Santara makeup anyway. So, mm. like, the eyes and the nose and the mouth oh, yeah, are all free. Yeah. That's the big difference. Mm. The only time I did that um, was on the Sarah Jane Adventures. I was a character called Plark, the mm. light sculptor, and I was kind of actually enclosed inside that. So I was looking through the nostrils of the mask, oh, where there was a big, oh. sort of like um, uh, a, a big mechanical eye on my forehead, um, and that was yeah. kind of that. That was like Why being not? inside a diving helmet, and that's the mm. only time I've actually had a chat to myself and go, okay, just have a bit of a breathe and calm down, because yeah, it was yeah, that slight, yeah. that slight claustrophobic reaction. But yeah, yeah it's the kind yeah. of thing that just you pre- you prepare yourself mentally for it, and then sort of occasionally you might have a bit mm. of a wobble, but usually it's okay. And you've got a whole team looking after you as well, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah it's good. It's pretty good. Yeah. So how do you pass the time when you're getting sontarand up in the it's morning? It's very early in the morning, so after a certain point, I just don't. <laughs> sleep. Yeah. But, uh, Can you sleep in the yeah, chair? Yeah, after, after a certain it depends what the process is. But so, yeah, there was a certain yeah, point yeah. after which 
I would have a kip. Thing is, they put the whole sort of um, cowl over the head, and it's sort of like a good three inches of latex either side of your ears. So it muffles you. It's like wearing a pillow on your head. But then I would nod off. Hey, nice one. Yeah, I, I would nod yeah. off, and then it would kind of reset my hearing as well. So fall asleep and then awake and then so clear it all out. Yeah, and it's it just 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 your ears go to a different setting, and at the end of the day, conversely, when they take it off, all of a sudden, oh gosh, that's you know, it's 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 something like you're seeing things in in, in Technicolor again. It's kind of it's it's, it's very strange. Yeah, is it, is yeah. it like, like depressurizing when it, when the plane? Yeah, out yeah, absolutely like that. It, it does, yeah, yeah, so you, 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 you do sort of go pop, and it's a, it's it's a very peculiar sensation to try and describe. But uh, yeah, it is all quite an altered state. See, see when. when <laughs> When you think of playing a Doctor Who hmm. monster, you don't think, yeah, my ears are going to go pop at some point and uh, yeah. yeah. forwards. And, yeah. You know, you don't think of that. That hmm. sort of stuff. Actually, just on that subject, I mean, did you did, did you ever think that you would, you, you would you know, did you want to be an actor? Did you think that you would end up playing a Doctor Who villain of, uh, you know, some legendary status back when you were a kid? Oh, I love Doctor Who. That was my favourite, absolute favourite programme yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, I did, right I, yes. Oh, God, yeah. You know, I, 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 but, but, uh, but I think... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't expect it really because I, I did sort of plays at school and it kind of crept up on me that I enjoyed it and I was good mm. at it as well, crucially. But it wasn't until a bit later that I actually sort yeah. of thought I could actually do it as a job. Um, but yeah, no, I hadn't, I hadn't yeah, guessed. I'm literally, in the same week that I actually yeah. applied to drama school in earnest, after I'd so like had a job in the real world for a little bit, mm. then they announced that the C series was coming back. So it was like a kind of like a bit of a harbinger. Yeah. I was sort of like, ah, play yeah, the cards right. Yeah. But who knows? But you know, yeah, good luck. Yes, yeah. but yeah. obviously, you know, when I was a kid, I wanted my own TARDIS. Yeah, a practical one that of works. Course, so, yeah. yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Actual yeah. Real absolutely. Not yeah. these little toy things. No, 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 no. Time no. Space machine. Yeah. I remember being, being very determined. <laughs> to my dad saying, we, "We, we, need to build one," and him going, "Well, we could sort of do one and then imagine that it." Went, no, no, it has to work. So. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> right. Unacceptable. <laughs> yeah. If it can't take me back to the Crusades and yes. Walter Scarrow, then I'm <laughs> absolutely not interested. Yeah. Frankly, yeah. 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 <laughs> get get back to the drawing yes. board. Yeah. So, uh, Dan, how how did uh, Doctor Who come your way in the first place, and you know how did you come to be strapped? It was well, it was just very, um, it was just very fortuitous timing, really, because I'd mm. had a, I'd had I'd been invited to audition for something, um, uh, yeah, in, during, during one summer when I was I was doing a Shakespeare play in the middle of a forest in Ipswich, and I this is before the days of self tapes. I couldn't get yeah. to London to go to that casting. And so uh, this thing's happened, you know. It, you know, it's you know because acting is like yeah, buses, and it's like two jobs come up at once, whatever. And I was having a chat with my agent, yeah. going, "Okay, well, that's a shame, but you know, I'm sure things will come along again." And I just happened to say in passing, "Oh, it's my birthday next month. I'd love to be in Doctor Who." It was a kind of like a birthday present because it's my favourite program. And it just happened to be at the right time when I think they were bringing the Tontarans back, and I think they must have already cast mm. Chris Ryan or made the dis made the decision they were going to be quite small and compact. So they were looking for actors within a certain very specific height sort of distinction. And so, yeah, then I was invited to audition for a score, the Bloodbringer. And, um, and yeah. yeah, and I did okay in that audition, really. It felt like I'd done about 20 years' work of research <laughs> um, by the back door. So I'm, 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 I'm like, Not like yes. your life had been leading yeah. up to that point. Well, I'd, yeah. I'd certainly done the homework. And so, like, my then agent was yeah, like, yeah. it's for an alien in Doctor Who. And it's a character called Score. It's like, is it a Sontaran? <laughs> It's an alien, dear. Yeah. I can't yeah. say. It doesn't say. So, yes. I, I can't say. I, I sort of outed myself there as a kind of like... <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, but no. Yeah. Oh, did, did they not know at that no, point? No, well, yeah. I, I certainly... My agent... So, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't explicit in the brief. Yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, no, I turned up and but I... You know. yeah, Yes, I, I did I did mm. a good enough job. Um, and then, obviously, yeah, they had a room yeah. suit that fitted me, so they got me back. And also, when they did all the sort yeah, of like... Yeah. All Doctor Who Confidential and stuff, I, I knew my stuff talking about Sontarans mm. and oh, Rutans. Yeah. Yeah. So I think... And also, you know, yeah. most people who work on the show have got a background with it as well. They were fans when they were kids. They're going, okay, yes, yeah. oh, we know you. We like you, is that mm. kind of thing. So, yeah, certainly, as well as having a rubber suit that fitted me, <laughs> then I went, okay, yeah, let's get, get down back. And then, <laughs> and of course, by the time sort of like a good man goes to war sort of came back, I, I literally didn't get the script... Mm. And it wasn't until I actually got the script through, which was like the day before the read through, I thought, oh, okay, it might be it might just not a little line as a cameo, which is which is great going down to Cardiff, yeah, yeah, but then sort of yeah. like all of a sudden I read Strax's part and went, oh, okay, this is fun, and uh, quite a bit, yes, oh, yes. wow. So how how was that? Mm. So you know you became a, a hugely popular mm. character mm. and had a, a you know really big and, and prominent part across those those mm. series. How did that feel for you to kind of? be surprised by by that and you know to not have known that that was what was going to be well happening. it's it, it, it's lovely how it just sort of chimed with sort of like uh, various mm. things that i can do it's like that's a funny script and i know i can land those lines and also in the just in the first episode he's got mm. a great sort of arc 
you know, he's got you've got you've got yeah. so much to play in that episode as well. And also, you get this wonderful yeah, death scene. Yeah. But that was delightful. But actually, we find out that he's that he's not dead. <laughs> so that was great. But um, but no, yeah, it, it, it's a Stephen yeah. Moffat script. Yeah, of course absolutely, not dead. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was it was that sort of um, interesting thing. How how yeah. I, I think I, I, things were happening sort of quite quite rapidly behind the scenes as well. Mm. So. I think I went up thinking that I was just going to be in one, one episode, and then we started filming the Christmas special, and then we were sort of back for the yeah. name of the Doctor as well. So I was like, "Oh, hang on, yeah, this this is nice, this is fun." And I remember yeah. when um, when the news came, mm. I'd just been doing a, a sort of like a, a gig in London, in central London, and being on the top of a double decker bus, and then suddenly seeing on Twitter that Matt Smith had sort of like announced he was leaving, and I went, "Oh God, have I still got a job?" And then suddenly being invited <laughs> to, and then sort of seeing Ben Wheatley is directing the first episode. Oh God, I'd love to work with Ben Wheatley. And I'm like, oh, oh, great, and I'm in it now. <laughs> this is you know, ev- ev- everything is sort of happening. So obviously, so uh, yeah. yeah, and that was a, and some deep breath was the last Paternoster Gang episode on screen, yeah. and but that was that was a nice yeah. one to sort of like uh, to, to go out on. But I remember Neve and I going back yeah, at Neve McIntosh who plays Madame Vastra, going back on the train yeah. after having been with them for the first you know sort of like um, first week, first nearly fortnight of filming with Peter's sort of yeah. tenure, and thinking yeah. we're part of the gang now, we're part of the team, and then all of a sudden going oh, home yeah. back to back to London yeah. and sort of going. Oh, I quite, quite like to stay a bit longer now. But it was it was it was, it was a lovely thing, you know, it was a lovely thing to be part of and it was kind of a, yeah, mm, just just really yeah. it was just you know, as with any job like that, sometimes with, with, with filming mm. and stuff like you, you turn up for a day or sort of turn up for a week and it's really nice but it's then then you go home again. But that you get the chance to actually sort of build stuff up over the course of months and sort of yes. build a rapport with people and you know and also when they start to especially as wonderful a writer as Stephen, you know, they start to know your voice as an actor. And so, yes. and also, what land, lo- lines really you can land, and yeah, they kind of write for that, and you know, it's, that, that's mm. such a privilege to have as well. So it's yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fantastic. You know how much uh, you know part of it all you, you guys became, and and you know, the chemistry it, it's all, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it yeah. comes through on screen. Mm. You just you just kind of warm to, to to that little group, and you just enjoy being in their company. It's, yeah, it's brilliant. It's a real treat. You know, I, I was watching the Snowmen recently. We we looked at it's Christmas one of Jeff's episodes. Ah, yes, yeah, it's, it's one of my favourites. And and that bit with the memory worm, and you know Matt's like, can you oh, yeah. go and get it? And you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and the and the gauntlet thing and stuff. It's so silly, no, it's a, but it's so it's funny. A fun scene, yeah. And it's just, yeah. yeah, it's just delivered brilliantly. But between you both, yeah, yeah it's, it's great. So, how many Sontorans have you now played? Ooh. Oh gosh, uh, loads on screen, and even more on Big Finish, endlessly. So uh, yeah. I, I couldn't yeah. say. So okay. we are we are legion. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, all the same, yeah. He's kind of just just cloned out, isn't he? Just yeah. replicated himself across yes. multiple media. Well, the next time you're getting made up, and you know you've got four, four hours in the chair, you can think back through how many you've played, and that'll pass a couple of hours yes. for you. you know, yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, clock, clock them up. So you, you've actually worked with three doctors now, haven't you? So no, more than three, four doctors, right? Yeah, so on screen and on big finish even more. So yeah, I've, I've, on screen, yes. big, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, and, yeah. and obviously Matt, Pete Capaldi, as you said, and Jodie Whittaker as yes, well. Yes, and David Tennant yeah. as well. With them, um, and yeah, David Tennant, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hmm. uh, we've got a question about about them in a moment. But what's that like for you, Dan? And particularly with big finish, I guess. Hmm. But you know, having uh, and being a fan t- to get to work with, you know. Childhood idols. Oh yeah, and, you know, it, 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 brilliant. It's, it's, it's great. I mean, you know, the first time I was invited to sort of um, to, 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 to work mm. with Big Finish, it was a whole thing of being there with Peter Davison, and obviously it looks a little bit different in sort of like a, it looked a little bit different in 2011 that he did yeah. in 1982. But um, then yeah. you put the earphones. Not on. to my mind. Not exactly. He's absolutely. Still young and beautiful. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Flaxen haired. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Graceful like a gazelle across the savannah. <laughs> yes. It is. Ed, Ed's bald in cricketing gear, flapping, flapping behind him, gorgeous. With his cricket bag. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Leather on willow, etc. Um, but uh, but honestly, you put put the earphones on and close my eyes, and also yeah. I'm in an episode of Doctor Who. And yeah. It's like and I'm five years old, and it's yeah. like, it's, 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 it's 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 amazing. Oh, man, it's the kind of thing, and so and then rapidly Sylvester and yes and all of them it's kind of a it's extraordinary sort of re- revisiting that so that kind of world because obviously it's it's audio yeah, so yeah. The, 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 pi- the pictures are always better on radio you know because it's so so elusive mm. so it's um, yes yeah. yeah well every time you listen to Big Finish you, you know you, you're picturing the Doctor as they were and you know they like you said they haven't aged yeah. at all f- or on it you know it's great so um c- can you tell us a, a, a fun uh, anecdote about your time with e- each of the doctors that you've worked with. Right, it okay. Must fun, they, they must be funny. Um, well, it, it could, it could yes. be boring. We don't you know. want a depressing one. It must be fun. That's oh, gosh. Um, 
<laughs> Sorry, mate. Yeah. He, he thought the questions. He thought that one. Mate. I don't right. Know. Okay. Um, they're, they're all perfectly <laughs> nice. We sort of. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I can't. Remember. I think is I've, I've, I've done. I've done quite a few. I've done. You know, yeah. Work for big. Work with Big Finish for over eleven years now. No, twelve years. So yeah, really. there's quite. There's quite a lot of. Quite a lot of things I've done, and I've just sort of struggled to. Think, yeah. So I suppose you you must. Hmm. Um, it always seems, particularly with Big Finish, quite you know a, a family. You know, set set up, and like we've talked to Lauren Cornelius oh, yes, on yeah, our yeah. show before. Yeah. You know, and and she, I think she auditioned for something, didn't she, Paul? And, and had a small part in something, and then they liked yeah. her and called her back for more. And now she's mm-hmm. Dodo with with uh, you know the first Doctor. And, and there's quite a lot of that it happened with Miranda Raisin as yes. well. You know, she yeah. she did a, a part and came back, and you know it it feels like you know if you get in there and they like you and like you were saying they kind of learn people's skill sets and abilities yeah. and start to develop things for you and you know it does you know i bet you know everyone really well there yeah yeah there's like, lots, lots of different sort of things it's, it's kind of like a rep company you know because uh, one thing i had done yes. i I'd, I'd been yeah. on the um i'd been on the bbc radio drama company the radio rep in 2008 for nine months so it's a whole thing, and not not long after I left drama school. So I was about eighteen months out of drama school. Then sort of I, mm. I, I I did did a good long stint on the rep, and that was kind of you know just learning the job. So basically, you're in the yeah, BBC, yeah. virtually not quite every day, but so like most days, and you do a whole range of things, not just radio plays, you know, like the Arches or whatever, mm. but also you're doing readings, you know, on factual programs. Also, once or twice, I was on the Today program, you know, yeah. when they released cabinet papers about the Suez crisis. I played Anthony Eden, right. you know, and things like. So all these absolutely random things, but you kind of <clears throat> there's no substitute, you know, for learning, being able to learn on the job. And so, and also, one of my other particular skills is doing multi-voice things. So, being able to change my voice and sort of like uh, not, not not just impersonating, but sort of different di- uh, accents and stuff. Mm. So, it's very useful to have that as part of a as part of a radio sort of company. And also, with Big Finish, I think again, yes. it's knowing knowing the material, you know, sort of um, yeah, yeah, be, yeah. being very aware of Doctor Who and also different sort of mm. styles of it as well. Because obviously, a season twenty four sort of um, Sylvester McCoy story is going to be very different from a Tom Baker one from season 14 or whatever so it's got which yeah, yeah. and they evoke those different things so it's kind of a but yeah yes they, yeah. they do yeah yes yeah, so no but the first first couple I, I played my cards slightly close to my close to my chest in terms of mm. I went in there and just a good good job as a proper actor and then we went to the pub so like after a couple <laughs> of ones and then I slightly started to let fly about monoids or something I'm like oh okay <laughs> you speak our language too <laughs> he knows about monoids yes, yes. You're, you're one of us <laughs> yes yeah. you come into the secret room now if you're talking about monoids don't, don't worry about those people over there come over yeah. here now yes yes <laughs> It's a password. Oh, there's, not, hmm. there's not many people know what monoids are outside of Doctor Who circles. You mentioned something like that. Everyone knows a Cyberman or a Dalek, but a monoid. Yeah, monoid, mm, yes. That's something else. No, Tar and, we're talking Tar, tar and, and Wood Beast, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <that's a> thing. <laughs> so let's let's have a, uh, let's have go to Twitter then. So, okay, this is a, hmm. this is a random one hmm. actually here. So, um, uh, just, oh, sorry, Paul, I'm just going to in, interject there. Every time. Okay. If, if every it's the time. question from. If it's a question from Andrew, I just want to say, Dan, this is in relation to a scene I couldn't stop laughing oh, at. Oh, Jeff loves it, this. When actually. it went out. He, he, he and, um, absolutely loves it, don't you? One of my absolute favourite moments. But I'll, ask, I'll let you carry I, on, Paul. Sorry. Can I ask a question now? Can, yeah, I, can yes. I do it? Yeah, you sure? Yeah. Cheers, mate. That's great. Right, so Andrew Andrew Heesh on Twitter asks, if you, Dan, actually ate any... Ch- oh, um, I'm going to rephrase that. Might have to edit this. Dan, Andrew Heesh on Twitter asks... Did you actually eat any chocolate filming the brilliant <laughs> scene in the corner shop? <laughs> yes, solo chocolate. It's actually incredibly <laughs> difficult to eat in that mask. So, it, is it really? yeah, it's, and, and also sometimes as well. I had because this this iteration sometimes yeah. they had prosthetic teeth in, and things about big teeth like that oh, you, you can't eat in it because uh, otherwise you'd break, break your them. own teeth even. So there was a bit of mm. uh, but sort of like you know, honestly, it was just a. Uh, just trying to get, trying to keep the thing stuck on your face for one thing. So there was, there was a little yeah. bit of um, judicious kind of like miming around it, working around it. So just, like, yes, just accidentally some slipped, some might have slipped in. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. Just, just at the end of the take. But otherwise, it yeah. just, like, just, just yes. one, one more take, one yes. more take. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You, you do know Jeff was quoting that for. Well, he still does actually quote. So, yeah, I still do. He can't uh, resist. You know, it's an inferior, uh, you know, tribute, but. Uh, it, that just I love that you know you, you send the others out and then there's that really quick montage of all the sweets and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> yes, so it was good. nice. So fun. It was nice the way they filmed that as well. Because almost like chucking the wrappers up in the air and sort of going, mm. "Can you catch that?" And then then sort of, you know just give them something, give, give the camera something to sort of like to track on as it sort of goes down and then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it is literally the kid in the sweet shop, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, that's what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's literally that. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I, I mean, that was the side of Sontarans that, that we never never suspected. Yeah, and yeah, it kind of makes sense. You know, they need mm. energy. Yes. And, you know, they, those things are high on disposable energy. Absolutely. So, you know, it's... Uh, it's perfect, perfect fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, I love that at all. I mean, actually, just on that, was there? I mean, uh, we, we got two very different costumes now, haven't we? Because you got mm. the blue costumes from yes. the slightly older. Yeah. Then you got these kind of. Mm. Uh, we spoke to Ray Holman. He what did he call them? Jeff, yeah. Dirty, D- dirty, dirty, sometimes. grim and dirty, or mm. something. Yeah, like that, wasn't d- it? D- dirty, stinking yes. sometimes, <laughs> or something. Yes, distressed. <laughs> More kind of brute. Yeah. Brutish, yes. uh, almost. Was, was, there, was yeah. there any um, big difference from your perspective wearing the two different? Uh, you, you mentioned the teeth, obviously, but was there any? Yeah, it, it, it's a completely different prosthetic. So the the, the previous one, the the, yeah. uh, the the one in the blue outfit, mm. that's a simple two piece prosthetic. So it's like a cowl. It's like a um, uh, like a balaclava helmet with your face poking out, and then a much thinner piece of yeah. um, uh, silicon that sort of goes over the face. So it's but it's all one piece. Whereas the new makeup sure. is about mm. four four different sort of pieces that have to be glued into different parts. So there's a back bit, a neck bit, it's like a face bit, and then it's like a chin bit. So, as you can imagine, that takes a lot more kind of like gluing on. And then, of course, yeah, yeah, the yeah, costume. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was because yeah, because Ray had the uh, fabric printed for that, so it was like that pleated sort of well, thing, yes. a bit more like the original yeah. Time Warrior design. It's fantastic. But mm. no matter which way you do it, they've you still got that massive collar on there, which is just. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> which is just—it's a thing to try. Can't and, get round yeah, that. no, just trying to go shit wearing that. It's kind of um, you know the way I, the thing yeah. is standing up in it because I go, oh I, I went I went over to uh, to when it was being designed and I was able just to sort of move around mm. it and go okay you might oh. might think about shoulders bunch up a bit yeah. if they because I knew if they want to do the shot where they sort of take the helmet off the head yeah then yeah, if yeah. it's yeah. built up to a certain sure. extent then you can't really do that with mm. sort of like you just can't lift your hands above a certain your shoulders about a certain level because it's so built up. So I, I put some things like that, but even then, it's um, I think no one I didn't anticipate sitting down in it. So there's the there's the interrogation sort of bit where sort of like there's there's, there's a bit in the field hospital in the Crimea, yeah. and um, yeah, it's just sitting down and the sort of collar sort of goes up and then he's trying. Basically, it's like someone punching you with the chin in slow motion, and then sort of oh, trying to yeah. <laughs> trying to trying to get your words out. Oh my goodness! So it's it, it's like the thing is because yeah. also I hadn't so I like, done anything in prosthetics for about seven years, but you know it was, I hadn't done it for a little bit, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I always remember so like what the process yeah. is because in the hotel room the night before, I plan everything. You know I know the words back to front because I know that I'm going to be knackered and so like it's going to be so like very challenging as an environment, mm, mm, but basically mm. plan everything I want to do, and of course you know you've got to be prepared to throw out throw those out the window because the director might, the director might have a completely different idea that's great, but yeah. Just knowing that you've got to cont- what you've got to contend with. If I yeah. got, get about 60, 65 percent out of what I've prepared about what I want to do, then that's okay. But it's just mm. you, you you never anticipate quite what's going to be thrown at you in the daytime because there's yeah, so many yeah. different yeah. things. So it's yeah, because it just gets mm-hmm. even. You know, we were filming on uh, all that stuff in the Crimea. It looks fantastic, but it's like it what yeah, it was great. it was sort of driving sleety rain on a Welsh hills <laughs> Welsh mountainside yeah. with you know inches of mud. That sort of thing, going. Yeah, this yeah, is. Yeah, it's quite warm, but just trying not to. There was one bit where I came out and we were being drive, driven around these, so yeah. like these kind of golf buggies, and uh, four, four by four, you know, some quad bikes. And I got out yeah. and I was wearing these riding boots, which are fantastic, really nice, sort of like you know, quality, but quite sort of um, mm. quite new and so quite slippy soles. And I got off the <laughs> got off the buggy into this kind of like mudslide, and then I nearly did the splits. But I managed to say vertical because the whole thing going, this is a brand new costume. The first thing I can't do with all of this prosthetic, new prosthetic, new costume, I can't just go splat into the mud. So, yeah, they, they were quite impressed by that. I kind of like literally <laughs> slithered around, you know, sort of action Sontaran. But, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's every, every, day is, every day is a challenge. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. How many days filming were you, were, were you there for, Dan? Oh, gosh, I can't remember now. It was a couple of weeks, but... Um, I, th- I think I I drew I drew the the the, sh- the, the longest draw because that time Johnny mm. Watson he was he he got more of the four a.m. starts I think I think I, I came out of it okay but also because oh, also it's it amazing they managed to get anything done yeah. at all because they were trying to do it through COVID as well so they had a yes, very specific course, thing yeah, about yeah. having oh, different different units in different cohorts so if one person went down in one mm. unit then that didn't knock out everybody else because they were bubbled with them. So that was the kind of thing where Gosh, can it was it was astonishing and just just as a logistical feat for them to get anything done at all, yeah. let alone looking as good as it did. Then that was that was yeah, an incredible absolutely. achievement. So uh, yeah, yeah. We, we've said that before yeah. on the podcast. Like, you, you know, we both loved Flux, and mm-hmm. uh, the fact that we got anything yeah. at all yeah. was uh, you know extraordinary. Uh, yeah, a miracle, yeah. and that it was as, as good so as it good. was. Yeah, yeah. with, with yeah. the 
uh, you know, difficulties mm. that, that were faced. You know, we've spoken to other people who were in, in the series mm. and, you know, we, we knew there was going to be eight episodes and it went down to six and then, you know, mm. all, all sorts of things happened. And, yeah. You know, yeah, I think it's in, incredible. And this whole thing of having multiple storylines with, so like, characters, you know, the lead characters being separated yeah. as well. You can, yeah. you can sort of see the logic, but uh, not just narratively, but also mm. from mm. production-wise, yeah, let's make sure that <laughs> yes. we don't lose, we don't yeah. wipe yeah. out a month's yeah. filming. Yeah. Yeah, if everyone yeah. goes. <laughs> we all go together when we go. You know, we can lose that bit of the story. Yes. Let's, yeah, you know, yeah. Do, move over to Plan B kind yeah. of thing or Plan D. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. yeah, that's that's pretty good actually. I I, I love that actually. Yeah, I, I was going to ask something and I've bloody forgotten what it was now. But it was oh. um, it was a, it was a really enlightening question that that would have taxed you. Uh, and then some. So oh, well. I'm going to hand back to <laughs> Jeff while I okay. rack my brain yes. to think of it. So it was a oh. good one. Good so one. I'm going to ask you. Uh, where do all the different Sontaran names come from? Is there like a Sontaran name generator <laughs> website? Or... I think it defaults to an aggressive monosyllable, really, is the ideal one. Stire, stike, score, yeah. yeah, it's kind of got all them that could be spat out across a parade ground. Yeah. And it's kind of yeah. like... Um, Although yeah, there's, actually, there's yeah. a very... well, when you think about it, Lynx is probably the, the, the original Sontaran. Yeah. That, that it's probably the odd one out in all hmm. that, isn't it? Because it's not yeah, quite... It is a little such, bit, yeah. such a brutal name. Lynx. It's a bit more yes. melodic and... Lynx. Uh, more, more yeah. Yes. Yes. Lynx. Lynx by Sontaran. Oh, yeah. Lynx. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makes me think of a... You know, yes. or, or a cat, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. You know, a large cat. Yes. Yes. That's it. Exactly uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, uh, one of our Twitter followers, Gilster, asked, how does it feel to have appeared in the main show Ooh. and Torchwood and Sarah Jane Adventures as well? Ooh, the I, whole, the, the I wasn't in Torchwood. Gamut. I've never been in Torchwood. I've been, I've been, no, actually, I tell a lie. I've been in one on, on Big Finish. I've been in an audio of Torchwood. That's, but not that's on screen. Okay, oh yeah, well, yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. The whole Hooniverse. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very pleased. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a job, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's now and then. To, yeah, Torchwood. It's, it's quite nice because you know, when, when I was little, I lived in Cardiff, so it's always nice yeah. actually doing something upset there. So it's kind of like it's. Uh, it was yeah, it was so nice you know, yeah, going yeah. back and that sort of thing. So it was. Uh, yeah. It was. Uh, mm. Yes. Yeah. What was it like it was working good. on the on the Sarah Jane adventures with with Liz, Liz Slade? Oh, it was fab. Yeah, it was great. It, it was weird that it mm. turned out to be the very last episode as well because no one had any idea. Really. Yeah, so. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, it was just. I mean, that, 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 as I said, it was the most challenging prosthetic that I've worn, and so it was kind of quite a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they worked out, every, the production team worked out every single eventuality that if it rains in Cardiff, they knew what to do, because that happens <laughs> quite often. That's, that's quite what, common. What was yeah. more highly un- likely going to happen? Yeah. What was what was more unusual yeah. was if it's July and there's yeah. a heat wave, then what do you do? <laughs> so you know, and I was in so like quite this heavy prosthetic, you know, sort of. Um, yeah. You know, not being able to see out, and also like a Jawa wearing like quite heavy Hessian and that sort of thing. So the first yeah. day, I was really yeah. kind of quite having a bit of a heat stroke thing. But then, you know, mm. they absolutely so sort of took that on board, gave me a, gave me a sun lounger to lie yeah. completely horizontal. The only way I could be comfortable was to be completely horizontal. Oh, fantastic! And then they had they had a guy uh, walking around uh, with an umbrella over me for the whole thing to make sure I didn't get sort of a didn't overheat and stuff. So yeah, yeah. they, they sort of, yeah. it, it's as I say, ev- everything everything you know on set is, is practical problem solving, and you mm. know they sort of they get that. But uh, yeah. yeah, it was a really fun episode. It's a nice, nice, nice little story. It's great. Yeah, and then so that was the last episode of that. Cause, uh, we spoke to Phil Ford a little while ago as well, mm. didn't we? And and then Wizards versus Aliens yes. sort of came out yeah. of it, didn't it? To, yeah, to be able to keep right. people working, yeah, yeah, as obviously yeah. the mm. the sort of plan for season was was in mm. you know sadly cut short. So, uh, what was Wizards versus Aliens like for you? Was that it was fun? great. Yes, no, it was, I was obviously in that for, for a good three years, and that was. Uh, Mm. It's a nice, nice rec- as, as as ever, you know. It's, it's nice to have a little recurring job where you can actually build something. You know, it's, it's lovely to be a guest star and go yeah, and doing yeah. things. But that, especially then, you know, when they start to invest more in the character and you sort of like start to, you know, mm. you start to, by the end of it, I had some very interesting sort of um, plot lines for my character sort of going through it. Randall Moon, mm. the Hobgoblin. And of course, the inevitable story yeah, where yeah. Uh, he transforms himself into a human yeah. who looks a bit like me. So I don't have to wear. It's strange, that, isn't <laughs> it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Luck- yeah yes. Lucky that. Yeah. Lucky yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I mean, I, I, was, I was looking at. Uh, I, I can't recognise you at all in that. It's a full on. Yes. Yeah. You know, the nose yeah. and the ears and the mm, eyes. Yeah. You think, that's, that's mm. not. Because generally you can see something, even if it's only vestigial, mm. you know, of, of yeah. the face behind it. But you can't really can't in that. You think is that really Dan Stark? He, it's really interesting he because say over twenty five. Hey, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good though because they sculpt. They, first of all, they do it like, like with all of them. They do yeah. the life cast of my head, and then there are certain aspects yeah, of. Yeah. There's things like you know little things about my eyebrows, like my ears are a little bit uneven, 
and then you see his ears and they sort of like they bend in a certain way oh okay I'll see what you've done there you've actually taken my yeah. and so you know all, all the eyebrows <laughs> yeah. all little things but the fir- I remember the first time having the makeup test for that it was amazing because it was mm. just first of all having it glued on and it's like this different face in the, in the mirror in front of you but there was completely sort of just, yeah. just a neutral kind of pink colour just sort of like you know Caucasian sort oh, of like neutral right. flesh yeah. and then gradually they painted it mm. up so it starts so it blossoms into life like real flesh and it's like with all the spot, and it's just it's this amazing thing that all of a sudden it's quite uncanny. It's like going, oh hello, this is a kind of like, and then mottled skin comes to life, and it's like, yeah, yeah it was um, yeah. it was great. And then it's like, oh, it's can you incredible artistry, isn't and, it? And, and, and also trying yeah. to fill a costume on, and then it's like the first time it's like, okay, Dan, we're going to show, mm. we're going to take you into the office just with the prosthetics team, and then we're going to take you into the office. So do you want to? Turn it on. So then all of a sudden I sort of went to the office and climbed on a table and went, ah, and sort of just, to, just to give everyone a bit of an idea about what it was like. And it was, yeah. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> it's nice coming to life like that, as a sort of thing. And, uh, and also, that's yeah, amazing, that's amazing. Yeah. 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 Okay, also, because lots of it I was. I was going to say, it's almost like. Yeah. A, on, well, with, 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 it's fine. With, with my performance as well, there was there were lots, lots mm. of the movement and stuff, you know, that, that, that I like it. There's things which you can accentuate. Oh, the nose is pointing, the ears yeah. pointing, so I can use those to move around with. And I think with yeah. with the with the guys who played the aliens in them, the necros, they were so like they were very, their costumes were quite rigid, like suits of armour. Mm. They st- stood very strongly. Yeah, yeah, and also yeah. they had you know a remote control unit with their sort of tentacles going around as well. So I think there's possibly sort of like you know, they, they had to sort of build their performances around that. Whereas I think mine was like yeah. a, unlike the Santarans outfits. Mine was mine was yeah, clothes made of cloth. There's a clue in the name. They're yeah. much easier to wear, <laughs> so I could I, I could move a bit more freely and so you know. So it was it was, it was, it was yeah. and it's nice. Oh, obviously, I love being with Santarans, but this was something I could create from the bottom yeah. up. So it was uh, it was really nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah it, and there's and you no pull, precedent yeah. for it, is there? Yeah. Yeah. It's just entirely mm. yours. Mm. And you get to you know you well, and you want to stretch yourself, don't you, yeah. as an actor, and you know push yourself and try new things yeah. as well. So do you um. Do you get to walk down the street and uh, do, you, do you get, get recognised? Because you, it must be quite nice in a way because you've played some really well-known parts, but not as you. Oh yeah, no, if, if people so, do recognise me, could, they tend to be. Could you walk? The yeah, they, they, they do tend to be very, very dedicated fans. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> could, yeah. I was going to say we we we're going to. I thought you were going to ask Jeff. Um, was, was Dan ever walking down the street dressed as a Santaran or, or, the, or the Goblin or something like that? Yeah, that would well, be a lot of fun. Well, do you, oh, yeah, we talked to um, <laughs> Sam Sproul, do you oh, remember? Yeah. And they said when they were filming as um, uh, Swarm, his name was Swarm, Swarm. Yes. yeah, he's yeah. so great. But yeah. his name just popped out in my head. But he said one one day they went out and they they pulled up at the drive through McDonald's and wound the window <laughs> down, and, right. the, uh, and the server was like staring at uh, Azure and Swarm, <laughs> and they were like two Big Macs, you know. <laughs> so yeah, did you ever go out in in normal, you know, into normal world? In, in your I think the only time was during when we did Wizards, um, when Randall Moon oh, right. yeah. sort of went out. Uh, there, there's a shopping uh, area called the Hayes. In Cardiff, right in the middle, where there's a, there's a quite mm-hmm. famous sort of sandwich bar, and uh, walking up and down there, and sort of like, <laughs> so it comes, uh, get, getting the odd look because either people are aggressively undrinks, I said, I'm far too important to notice that, or they just rub yeah. it like crazy and they're very excited, and there was yeah, a whole, yeah. God, there was yeah, a whole lot, of, and there was a whole gaggle of, shall yeah. we say, rather, uh, rather pixelated. Sort of like, uh, first of all, a lot of a lot of a lot of lads who straight off the train. So sort of like, I was like, "All oh, right, I'm gonna hit him. I am. I'm gonna punch him." That's the kind of thing. W- w- wants to fight me, which was nice. Then, but then, but uh, then, then our security guy went, "No, no, you're not. Go be on your way." And That's then, not and then a bunch of similarly sort of like, uh, shall we say, relaxed. So like girls came and I went, I love him, I give me a snog. So, so, so again, they they were sort of like, you know, politely ushered away. <laughs> So yeah, it was, yeah, it was just um, yeah. Oh, oh, and there was, and there was, and there was a group of and there were a group of like you know yeah. youngish teenagers who for about ten minutes were just looking at me, so like squinting, so like and saying to the saying to the our, our, our assistant director, like, is he real or is he fake? Is he real? I was going to say, and they like, sit and they go, am I mad? Are you seeing? Yeah, that is well? he real? Oh, and then the director's going, yeah, no, he's yeah. real. He was born like that. And then and then they saw <laughs> and then they saw the makeup lady put a put a uh, put, put a paintbrush on my nose and went, yeah. he's fake, isn't he? Ah, oh, I can't believe that. He's fake. <laughs> And, then, so they, so, and they wandered off in disgust. It's <laughs> like, like even the possibility that that's real. Yes. Know, yeah. like, yeah. But they question it. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because it's I mean, right, the thing is, it looks the, fantastic. The idea of sort yeah. of, yeah, it does look fantastic. It does I mean, look it good, looks it? just good prosthetics mm. are, are amazing to, 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 to see as well. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're geared towards yeah. being on camera. So they, they, they mm, yeah, mm. but, but yeah, they, they, they do stand up the test. So certainly at a, at a yeah. they can work. Yeah. 
yeah, in, in, side, all, yeah. all natural. <laughs> kind of yeah. reminds me, you know, the, mm. the idea of a Doctor Who or you know, sort of creature mm. walking down a high street is like uh, it, you must have seen it that that um, picture from the seventies of uh, of a Cyberman having a fag <laughs> <laughs> yes. through his through his yeah, yeah. <laughs> just trying. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just it kind of brings you back to the reality of it, doesn't it? You know, there's this elaborately constructed fantasy and sci-fi with all the cinematography and all everything that goes into it. At the end mm. of the day, you know, with, with people in suits, is he real or is he not fake? Yeah. You know, yeah. just, which is brilliant because it all sells the magic, doesn't yeah. it? And it, you know, yeah. you guys are part of that, actually. You know, helping it come through for, yes. for just so yeah. we can consume it and enjoy yeah. it. You know, yeah. So um, let's go back to your, let's go back in time a little bit. Wibbly wobbly oh, Wayne's World. Do -do 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 -do. So if we had any you... money, we would actually put an effect on that, but we yeah. were completely <laughs> voluntary, low <laughs> amateur, low budget, nothing budget. Excellent. So, well, yeah. I, might, I might find something in the edit. Um, so how did you discover your love of acting? What what was the thing that kind of, you know, put you on that? Um, <laughs> I was just, just a plays at school, really. Um, Mm. So the first one I ever did was, um, so I was reminded of it by someone the other day, um, in Wales, uh, it used to be the case that on St David's Day, you did a little play and you got a half day off school, so that was great. So they had this little St David's Day play. <laughs> so one year, no, the first year that we did it, we sort of like sang songs to the miners, because during the miners' strike, very happy time. Um, and then the following year, we did this kind of like, um, it was, I think there were other things, but the bit that I was in was like a Welshified version of Heidi High. So I played. Oh, so it was like Heidi High, but everyone was given Welsh names. So it was like Peggy was called Blood Twin, <laughs> and I was called something like I was. I was, I was Ted Bovis, you know, so Paul Shane, and okay. and I think my name was like Gitor yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that. So um, Gitor. <laughs> yeah, and and they were putting on a talent contest, and um, yeah. and they were going to get Shaken Stevens and Bonnie Tyler uh, back because obviously two, two <laughs> Cardiff luminaries. So uh, and also two two two, yeah, two, yeah, yeah. two children who could do uh, cartwheels. Played said pop stars because, as you know, both Shaken Seams and Bonnie Tyler are famous for doing cartwheels a lot. So, for their so yes, Absolutely. and then we did that, and every, everyone clapped, and uh, then I got half day off school, so that was great. And then, um, and then after that, yeah, we did to, 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 yeah, plays at so like my uh, other primary school Christmas, yeah, Christmas shows, and then sort of like, and then at secondary school, I started yeah. doing some proper, yeah, you know, proper school plays where we sort of did a bit of Shakespeare and so yeah. like other things. Actually, it's yeah, and, and it just it just sort of crept up on me that I I liked it and I was mm. good at it. And I, sort of, I suppose I took it more seriously than other people did because they didn't. And certainly in my secondary school, yeah, we, did, yeah, we didn't have yeah. a, we didn't have drama as a timetabled subject, so it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't academic enough. But um, so it was, it, it was, it was, it was a, yeah, it's good, good thing to do. And then it sort of, um, and I did a bit more at university, and then I sort of thought, yeah, the drama scene was a little bit cliquey where I was. So I mm, didn't right, think about, mm. yeah. but then I was like, it, basically, I, I, yeah, I, I got the bug by then. I, I couldn't quite sort of let it go. Yeah. So even when I was. When I moved to London and I was like doing temp jobs and that mm. sort of thing, I was still doing stuff in the evenings, so like on so like yeah, little fringe venues and that sort of thing. And it got to a certain point where oh, really? one really? of my friends who mm. had made up an application to film school, he chivied me and chivied me and chivied me, so like to put an application into drama school. Mm. And then I, I actually yeah. put it in past the deadline to Bristol, and then I got in, and I was suddenly quite surprised. Oh, oh, hello, <laughs> I've got to move to Bristol. Oh, right. right. <laughs> so that was that was the kind of thing that was um, yeah. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't. It's not one of those disingenuous things. Well, I just fell into it. I always mm. wanted to do it, but it did take a lot of prodding me to yeah. sort of. And you know, but I think anyone who does it as a job, it's like, can can I really do this? I think I think it's it's quite yeah. it's quite a yeah. weird job that sort of like it. <laughs> it sort of um it it, it forces you. <laughs> to, yeah yeah you've got you've got to you've got to really want to do it because otherwise there are many many other it's, things. It's probably quite competitive, isn't yeah. it? Yeah yeah all, all, all the time. Yeah, it's, mm. it's part and parcel of the of the job. Mm. You just mm. you've got to find ways to sort of like keep yourself. Keep yourself happy doing it, and sort yeah, of keep yourself healthy, and, and also, yeah, and, and also, the times we live in, also, also find a way to actually sort of um, to, to to keep working in a way that you can sustain yourself as well. So mm. it's kind of um, and that, that inevitably that there's always a mix of different type of work that you do, and so like how you yeah, cut it with different yeah. things as well, and sort of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, you do quite a fair bit of uh, voiceover as well, don't yes, you? Yes, yes, I do. Things. Yeah, that's another sort of bread and butter mm. thing, which I'm very glad. You know, which again, you know, so yeah, you gradually yeah. build it, but so like, a, you know, and, until it mm. becomes sustainable. But it's kind of, yeah. So it's 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 another thing. Because I was always, you know, good at radio and it's like multi voice stuff as well. But you know, there's there's not it is, yeah, yeah. just now there are, unlike you know, even twenty years ago, there are so many more people who can do it. Mm. You know, there's uh, it, it it yeah. You can you can put an, a, a casting <laughs> brief out for any particular voice that you like, and you'll get something yeah, yeah, someone yeah. meeting that specific brief. 
and you know it's, it's yeah it's the, the, the whole, yeah, it's, it's 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 great because you know people who wouldn't have had a chance before sort of get access but equally if you want to try and make a living at it then it's, it's it makes it more mm. makes it more challenging but um, <laughs> but yeah yeah brilliant but yes. it's, it's it's nice to have all these different sort of um What's 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 the phrase? Um, fires in the iron, I think. So Irons in the fire. Yes, yes. String, strings Irons to one's no yeah. Yes, what it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, It's 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 getting a bit late for me. I'm not as young as I used Hell to be. No. Then, that's for sure. Oh. You know what I mean. My lumbar goes playing up. <laughs> what what were you doing for work before you got your first TV break? First TV role. I worked in theatre, darling. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a whole other stress I don't think. Yes, that, that, it, it does exist. No, I so, no, I also I, I, done, I, I also said I did lots of radio drama as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, yeah. but anyone you know think at least historically as well in this country, actors because it's a smaller industry and that sort of thing. We everyone mm. does a whole range of things. It's not like in America where you can sort of like you know sustain an entire career just doing TV or doing screen. Now it's slightly more different, yeah, a bit yeah. more demarcated. You know, and also people, as an industry, people like to put you in boxes. So, right, you do musical theatre, so you can't do anything else. And, th I mean, that that's just an inevitable sort of irritant. And equally, it's, it's, it's also the thing that's like, work begets work. So you get known for doing one thing, then, um, then yeah, then sort of like, it's sort of... Uh, then, 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 People yeah. talk, I suppose, don't they? Yeah. They mention your name in things. Yeah. Oh, you're looking for someone who does that? Well, I've got just the yeah. chap and Yeah, and so, but... Um, kind of stuff. But, yeah, but it's a mixture of things. Also, one thing which I did before I went to drama school, another thing which, which got me into drama school as well, is that um, I did a year's worth of evening classes in impro, um, which really opened things up to yeah. me because I was always good at acting. But actually, in terms of unlocking stuff and actually mm. sort of freeing yourself up, so you know, sort of doing doing improvisation on stage. That's that's another thing which I've haven't done so much of it so like recently, but sort of like, um, but yeah, that, that's that's always been quite an important an important sort of like skill to have, and it's applicable not just in terms of comedy. Really but kind of keeps your mind active. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it keeps everything at the front of your brain. And crucially, when you can get you know sort of um, tied up mm. in the technicalities of it, and also if it's if it's the business of show business, which can get on top of you a bit, just the thing where it's going out. There's no script. You go and play, and it's freeing. Mm. But that's the thing which keeps you keeps you fresh mm. and keeps you going as well, and yeah, the ability yeah. to surprise yourself. It, it, so it's yeah. It goes back to what you said earlier about um, <clears throat> you know you you learn your lines for for filming, but you like to kind of leave room for oh you have to yeah you, you know yeah. ad lib and yeah. you know because like you said you never know what what mm. the director yeah I mean that that, that is one thing actually which people have assumed with Strax that's like n mm. I haven't improvised none of those lines that you see with Strax on screen all of those are scripted really yeah. If, so so just one or two of them do sound as though they're just kind of off the cuff. No, that's yeah. called that's that's called acting. That's, <laughs> that's called what acting the job really. is. <laughs> <laughs> Making scripted words sound as if that's the they're skill. spontaneous. Right. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh, I mean oh, honestly, oh, but it, it, it is that thing of yeah. But obviously, as you said, as, yeah. as I said before, you know, the fact that Stephen knew my voice by then, then you know, mm, mm, can come yeah. out in certain ways. But the only thing which I did do <laughs> yeah. um, was. It was because it was released on YouTube, um, so like um, about ten years ago. Was uh, Christmas mm. carols. One morning, it was we were really up against it mm. in terms of the schedule, and so like, lots of delays mm. happening with filming due to technical reasons, as often happens. And I started making up um, Christmas carols in character as Strax, and then and then Matt heard me and went, "Oh, that's really funny. I'll get Saul, our director, to, to film it." And then sort of like Saul went, "Oh, that sounds good. Yeah." And so, so I said, "Don't tell the, the guy running the schedule." And then after one scene, he's like, "What? Well, get in front of that." And then he, Ran the, ran the camera, and I thought, oh god. Well, meanwhile, the first AD is pulling his hair and going, "We don't have time for this. We're on a, we're on a meter." And so, oh god. So I'm really good. And so then I sort of did my one I first of my sort of Christmas carols. So yeah. like, um, <clears throat> uh, when the red red robin comes bob bob bobbing along, I use a twittering avian for target practice. And then, <laughs> and then everyone laughed, and I did another couple of them. And then sort of, luckily, everyone laughed, yeah. so it was fine. And then they showed the, uh, took them upstairs. And then they use them on the Doctor Who YouTube channel as a kind of little sort of seasonal thing. Yeah, so it's still a like song tar and yeah. carols. But that's that's me. That's that's my improvising in character Strax, and that's that's yeah. one of the sort of few times that uh, that it sort of came that's out. Exciting. But um, but yeah, it's 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 it's, 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 it's a whole thing. That that's that that's a compliment to me doing my job properly. <laughs> if you think it's made up. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It is. It yeah. is. It is. Do, do do you feel a kind of um, a closeness to the character of Strax now because you yeah you, know, you play I, them quite a few I, I, times? I know him and I, I know he's he's got a very obvious mm. shtick and that's good fun to play. So it's kind of um, yeah. 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 But it's um, so so how how did the um, big finish audios for, for for the Paternoster gang come up? Were you I, I guess you were doing stuff with them already when when that yeah 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 it was it was a little yeah, I've been working for, for quite a few years and then I think they've been wanting mm. to get the license for the characters for ages. 
And it was only I think it was only when Stephen left that so I went other people. Went, oh, okay, we can do this now because I think there was still you know we could do something with these characters as a kind of thing. Yeah, then, then so, something might happen with them on TV exactly, or something. Yeah. Like that. But then as soon as that's, as, as that's gone, then so like all of a sudden big finish. So I go, great, because we've been wanting to do that for ages. We know this will work as a spin-off. And then it was lovely, actually. It was Neve who suggested it, that sort of um, <coughs> that we have a little, you know, sort of uh, a little sort of production meeting, sort of like about it. So, uh, so yeah. Neve and I, I think Catherine was away doing a play, but then sort of our script editor, Matt Fitton, and the producer, David Richardson, went to Big Finish Towers. Mm. And then, sort of like, we within about half an hour, an hour or so, we sort of came up with a, uh, a story arc, a seat for an entire season. Brilliant. Going, hey, here's all the things that we've been thinking about, because, like, you know, they've got, yeah. and it's, it's the whole thing of, yeah, yeah that, that's really nice as, as an actor having that kind of input with it. And so, like, and obviously, I've written a couple of them yeah. as well. And, and so it's kind of, uh, mm. yeah. Yes, I know, yeah. And, and you know, I also I love that, that you guys who played the parts are obviously so into it and so passionate mm. about mm. it that, you know, you've been thinking about what could yeah, happen yeah. and ideas and. Yeah. You know, and because hmm. I was going to say, did you go round at, at Big Finish saying, Do you know, I've got a really good idea for for Pat's well, I, I th- yeah, audios, I think because but, people you know. would ask us things at conventions about what would you like to see, and also, and also when we're on set, especially mm. Neve and I, it was the thing we bonded sort of going as much as because when you're upset, it's a very long day, and when you can get on with yeah. someone at so like quarter to five in the back of a yeah. taxi, and then still get on with them at seven o'clock at night when you're peeling bits off your face, you know, sort of like I think, then, then yeah, you're probably, a sign of a good yeah, you're probably tight. S- but then it's like, sliding some and, 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 and Neve yeah. loves sci-fi and that sort of thing, and genre stuff as well. So it's kind of like, they, 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 there's a feel for the material, so we both go, oh, oh. Mm. and you know, if you've got any kind of imagination, you go, oh, okay, if, that, if that's true, then something else is true. And it's like, you, know, you start to build little worlds and stuff. So it's kind of, um, <laughs> yeah. But it's, but yeah, and, and also, and also, yeah, and, on, on, camaraderie, yeah oh, God, yeah, and, and also, and also on, mm. On big finish, the virtue of audio as well is that sort of like you're not yeah. worried about budget restraints, you know, and um, yeah. and you can yeah, also we don't have to be glued into our suits for three four hours. Yeah, you, you can <laughs> yeah, be a sweat. Yeah, yeah, you can be a be a Santorin in your sweatpants. Yeah. and yeah, it's 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 no, there's a there's a oh, look quite <laughs> it's quite quite diverting. But um, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, the reason why I think I think you know if, even if there had been sort of the, the mooter thing for a, for a Paternoster gang sort of like TV spin off. You know, just in terms of a producer's point of view about the money, then it's kind of like you know, not only mm. has it got prosthetics, yeah, got it's got sp- it's got CGI yeah. special effects, and it's in historical setting. You know, that's all of a sudden you're making it's you're it. going, that's <laughs> gonna that's gonna be that's not gonna be cheap. <laughs> you know, at least Torchwood they set that in modern day Cardiff, so that's one side of things. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So it's kind of uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the thing is now yeah. is that the expectation with um, a, a lot of the special effects now are, it's it's, it's yeah. just massive. I mean. Yeah. You know, even even when you look at because um, you, you're talking about Deep Breath when when we started this, and you look at some of those early Capaldi <laughs> stories, which don't to me <laughs> seem like they were that long ago, yeah. but actually they are quite a while yeah, ago. Yeah, quite a while yeah. now. And you yeah. compare them to what you guys were doing in Flux, and this, you know, the whole cinematography, mm. everything just looks that much deeper and yeah. richer. No doubt, yeah. ten years from now, that'll look really old. Of course, again. yeah. Well, inevitably, mm. you know, sort of like you know? Ultra HD and like mm. 4K or whatever. You know, it's how it's being made, how how, how it'll be disseminated. You know, it's the. Uh, Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, so you mentioned um, conventions just Ooh. just now. Is that something that you get up to quite a lot? And and how do you find? Oh them? yeah, no, that's right. And I, I, I didn't. Yeah, do you enjoy map? them? Yes, quite. <laughs> yes. No, I, I, I went I see, around I the world. My with, questions uh, with, have been yeah with, with, with conventions, and it's uh, it's amazing. Just yeah, you know, it's it's the whole thing of because uh, I think I went to America. So like again, it was about ten years ago. It was in 2013 with Matt's mm. second series, Matt's second season, which really broke yeah. America. I think was it suddenly yeah, it became a big yeah. property there of a sudden mm. sudden. So I think that there's a Doctor Who convention in LA called Gallifrey, Gallifrey One, and yeah. I think it, it, it had been you know so like a, a well attended, you know, but minority interest sort of Doctor Who in the states. Mm. So they'd had us like a, a, a constant number of numbers, a sort of num- set of numbers for about twenty years or so, you know, about seven hundred people. Then all of a sudden yeah. it went yeah. massive, and so the first one I did, they had to cap it at about sort of like you know fifteen hundred sort of guests or whatever. So it was just kind of. Yes, it's absolutely full, but it's, it's, yeah. it's big, isn't yeah. it? And, yeah, and and they get fantastic. You know, well, and, uh, J- Jody was there this yeah. year, and, and Chris yeah. Chibnall, and mm. I think Lauren Cornelius went out, and various yeah. other big it's, and it, it's, it's amazing just just going in there amazing. and you sort of like. Also, because I remember the first one, because Neve and I were there, and obviously mm. when we weren't in our prosthetics, the first night. We was walking around and it's a whole thing of no, no one quite knows who we are. But they would sort of squint and go, oh, a little man and a tall Scottish woman. Who, who could they be? And then they announced us on like, the stage on the like, opening ceremony. Went, went, oh, it's you! <laughs> so it's kind of um, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's quite fun. But um, and and uh, oh gosh, um, and in 2014 yeah. with Peter's first episode with Deep Breath. Um, I went to New York to do uh, so like they, they, yeah, they had yeah. they trialed the kind of like an after show on sort of BBC America. 
called After Who. Oh, okay. And that was a whole kind of thing yeah. of being, being somewhat jet lagged. And that was Mark Gatiss was doing it as well. <laughs> and then so that whole thing of so like being in a studio with stuff like, you know, very, you know, with American TV, it's, it's, it's quite rigid in terms of yeah, there's yeah, an yeah. advertising break now. And so the audience goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. And, then, and all of a sudden you're suddenly going, be awake and it's like just really sparky and witty and that sort of thing and go back. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, it goes out, okay, now I'd break. Yeah. It's like just being Fall asleep fired again. at yeah. you like constantly. Yes, no, it, it, it was extraordinary. But then you're quite yeah. aware that this, this is a big property now. This is, this is a kind of, uh, this yeah. is a, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's a big series. It was, it was it's, amazing it's, to be part of that. You're right, so, it was. Really, yeah. yeah. Mm. It was it was the Matt Smith years, wasn't it? Really? Yes. It was. Yeah. It's, it's the day of the moon. I think was, was one that like was on the front of Entertainment Weekly and yeah. stuff. So it was kind of a, yeah the big the big yeah. TV bible yeah. in the states. So yeah. That's that's right. I, I mean, it was, that. it was great yeah. because because uh, John Nathan Turner tried to crack America mm. with Doctor Who in the in the eighties, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. And, you know, we're all kind of wishing him on, and mm. that's where we get sort of uh, Perry, Perry Gillian Brown, yes. you know, yeah. Nicola Bright faking. Nicola Bryant from Putney faking an American accent, <laughs> doing a great job yeah. of it, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then and then it sort of you know it succeeded a little bit. This it's like little moves mm. inwards, but then I remember because didn't they they had a bus, didn't they? That Matt and the guys used to go around on was it a massive yeah. tour bus? Oh, okay, well they did Doctor that around the UK. The did uh, they do America? Yeah, I thought I thought they. I, d- I, thought I don't they know because it, it went to. No. Um, I remember them being on the shores of. Loch Ness. I wasn't invited on the bus. Oh, anyway, no, so well. who cares? <laughs> Frankly, me, me and my me and my little pal scored. Yeah, hey, there we go. <laughs> oh, he's splendid. He's, yes, he's, he's not happy. No. Either, actually, he wasn't. He <laughs> wasn't allowed on the bus. He didn't allow me on the bus. Me, yeah. <laughs> scum, 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 scum. <laughs> That's that's an egg cup. I've had to blue tack his head in because it's it's very um it's it's very loose. It tends to fall off. It's rather right. like the two doctors kind of collar, if you know the Something, loose yeah, looser. thing that they yes. had. That's summer yeah. summer collar, yeah. 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 The summer mm. collar, yeah, the one the, the one specifically for, for Spain. Yes. yes indeed. So shall we go to another another social media generated question? Jeff, what do you reckon? Yes. Yeah, there's a couple of Facebook ones, aren't there? Oh yeah, yeah, because we got we got a Facebook group now. Oh, this is yeah. amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We do we do all the socials, you know, Facebook, Twitter, all of that. It's just it's incredible. So um, what we got? We got Catherine Sarah Cullum Hanshaw hmm. on Facebook who asks, "Well, oh, this is a good one, I think. Which classic Doctor would you most like to have acted alongside on TV? Oh, on TV. On TV. And why? Why? Why, oh, Dan? Gosh. Why? Oh God, there's so much to choose from. That's tricky. Yeah. And you know whichever one you're not going to choose, they're going to hear this podcast. I know, so. I know they well, will. Well, why didn't you pick me? Yes. Hey, dear boy, I raised you up yes. from the gutter. Yeah. Oh, it would be, not, it'd be nice we'll, to be we'll in this. We'll beep out the yeah. name. It would be a... Yeah, but so. then that's not answering the question then, is it? So. Nah, I... I it leaves a mystery yeah. then. All, all of them. But no, I, I, well, nice, nice it's like which, a, a, a nice gothic mm. Tom Baker season fourteen and kind of like something. Yeah, yeah. Some, that, that would be good. Yeah. Some, yeah. Something with the yes, something something Hammer Horror or yeah. or a nice dark Doctor Sylvester McCoy sort of like twenty season twenty five or twenty six. Because yeah. that was you know yeah. when I was watching that and that was kind of like you know just just the end of it mm. when I was because but equally you know when I first started watching it was Peter Davison so it was kind of like uh, they was, it was the, my first. Yeah. I remember yeah. the very very end of Tom Baker. So uh, so all all those options. So, you, you could have yeah. sneaked into Horror of Fang Rock or, or something. Yeah. Like, couldn't you? Yeah. That would be quite good. Ooh, I mean, that had a yeah. Rutan in it. Yes. The only time we've seen a Rutan in, yeah. in, in yeah. Doctor Who. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which, um, which classic Doctor do you think Strax would, would get on best with? Or which oh. one do you think he would annoy the most? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, the sixth Doctor is quite bombastic. And so I think mm, Strax and he would sort of like... Would so like definitely uh, butt heads over things. That's, that's yes. what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be quite funny, wouldn't it? Yes. That would be good. Yeah, Let, let's get that yes. pitching. Yeah. To, to be yes. <laughs> oh gosh, and if it was, um, if it was like a John season Cole. twenty-two story, it would have a massive body count as well, and Strax would be reveling in it. Yeah. Oh, he would yes. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're just total gratuitous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Gore even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It goes out half past five on a Saturday night, but still, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No one. Gets no, no one's got there, there is that bit in, in in the two doctors, isn't there? When you got um, when, when the Santaras have been blown up in the last episode, <laughs> like severed leg. Comes yeah. In, he's holding Commander Stack's leg, which is dripping green goo and yeah. blood off it. Yeah. You know, it's just, yes. It's, I remember watching that when I was eight, going, "Oh, this, this is good, isn't it?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> classic. Oh, I love it. I, I really do. Um, sorry, Jeff, we interrupted you. Or I did, at least. Yeah. Anyway. My apologies. There's um, a question from John Cole on Facebook. So mm. what other Doctor Who creature or, or creature from another show would you like to play? Oh, gosh. Something where I didn't have to be in prosthetics <laughs> for three hours, really, I think. Uh, the, the novelty is slightly... So, uh, uh, yeah. um, <coughs> 
I don't know. I've never done a motion capture type thing like Gollum or whatever. That would be quite interesting. Where it's Ooh. kind of like, um, ah, yeah. where you've got, well, basically you've got the freedom of movement. Because I think with all these things, it's difficult to know what it's like until you're actually in it. Because that'll predicate kind of, yeah. um, you know, but it's, yeah. Something where you've got more of your own performance coming through. As, as I said, with the recent, yeah. with the recent Sontarans, again, the, the mask is so mm. much more rigid. Just trying to get mm. anything mm. through that is quite, quite a, mm. quite, quite tricky. Yeah. So, you know, and also if you think about the classic monsters, you know, in the 1970s, when the mask is just solid latex, it is a vocal performance yeah. as much as anything else, you know, so like, as much as a physical yeah, one, yeah, because it can't, it can't really sort of, uh, it can't really move, but something, because, you know, you've got all the, um, mm. the mocap stuff, which is so, so sensitive as to sort of like, uh, the nuances of what you're yeah, doing. Yes, it picks up all the little nuances. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But equally, you know. Or yeah. you could do, yeah. As I was say, you could do like the, the Michael Wisher thing of uh, putting a paper bag on during rehearsal <laughs> over your head and, uh, and just go with that. Yes. <laughs> and just smoke loads of fags inside it, as he did apparently. <laughs> yeah. it's yes. A, it's a story where they took the bag off and all these clouds of smoke just came out. Like <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a different time. Uh, the 70s, yes. eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Health and safety was somebody <laughs> else's problem. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh, but actually, do you know what? When you. On, on a, Mm. I don't know, slightly more serious side, but you know, when when you were, when you were talking a moment ago mm. about um, being looked after with umbrellas and you know, yeah. lots of mm. fluids and stuff like that, mm. and people looking out for your your well-being, your welfare, and then you you, you listen or you know listen to the stories of, of Kevin Lindsay, the original. Yeah, oh, gosh, yeah, you, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a heart condition yeah. trying to go through all this stuff as well, and it's yes, it's and he didn't tell anyone because he wanted to work so much. But it's I think like, yeah, and then Paul yeah, Blokes, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you've got to. I think you've got to be sensible about these things mm. about sort of. Uh, but you know. It's, and people are more aware yeah, of it all now. Yeah, as well. and, and also the thing is, you've got a whole statement of health form. That either you could falsify, and then mm. and then when it, but, if yeah. if anything did happen, yeah. then you yeah. wouldn't be insured. So yeah, hey, stuff. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. As, yeah. As, as a, it's like the classic thing on, on our last day on our last day of term at drama school. We sort of got to mm. go horse riding, so it's like, an end of term treat. And then <laughs> the lady, yeah, yeah, yeah. the also said to her like. Now, none of you put on your CV that you are a qualified horse rider because it's not true. You've had to go. <laughs> and still see one or two of my classmates, yeah, horse riding. Right? So, yeah. You, you can get found out with that <laughs> very uh, very easily. Yeah, very yes. quick. Never say that you can ride a horse when you can't. Yeah. Oh dear! Uh, you, you mentioned just then, Dan, um, like the prosthetic masks from you know old old films mm. in the seventies and stuff. And I wondered if you had any favourite, um, you know, mm. creatures from from old Hollywood or from you know any film really. But anything that you know you always liked the kind of style of, or you know, like I always thought the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh Lagoon. yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I think oh, there's this this island Earth. That 1950s uh, film yeah, with people with massive yeah, foreheads, massive, that's the, and there's big, yeah. big brains, yeah, huge, isn't it? huge brains. Yeah. This is just mega head. Yes, and then so, yeah, they've yeah. got quite, they've got quite <laughs> a good sort of insectoid monster in that as well, haven't they? Um, the, they're a little yeah. bit um, Mars attacks, yes. so a bit of a homage yeah, to that, them, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. What else? Um, yeah. Oh gosh. Oh, I love all those old, old films. Because all those ones, they, they used to, yeah, because they, yeah, they used to show them all the time on. Because when I was a kid, there was so much less content. You know, the science fiction, fo- yeah. so much science fiction films on BBC yeah. Two at six o'clock. That was absolutely sort of a staple just, of just things. Pull yeah. something out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I remember there, there was hmm. one Christmas. It, it, hmm. it would have been late eighties when I'd finished school. Yeah, and they they did like a season of sci-fi films in the lead up to Christmas. Yeah, and because my, my my parents were working, my sister was still at school. I I'd been so it might have been sixth form or something like mm. that. Finish a little bit early, but either way, they every every morning throughout two, for two weeks they showed a load of old films. Mm. There's things like Gemini Man and and you know the, again this Island Earth. Mm. I think that was the first time I watched it, and you know loads of these things. And mm. I'd seen some of them before, but there was a load that I hadn't seen. I thought, oh, that's fantastic. And they showed um, one of my favourites, which was uh, I mean. They did like Silent Green. Oh, and, okay. Uh, Silent Running. Silent Running, is, yes. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. I've got it over there on, on a collection. It's <laughs> just a, I was crying my eyes out, yeah. man. It's just... Oh dear. Sorry, slight detour there. But actually, just on that <laughs> subject, I mean, are there any of those old old movies or something that, that you particularly like? You got any any favourites? Oh gosh, oh that's a god. This is like being like told to remember a joke. It's kind of like I, th- I think it, it, yes. it's a whole thing about Tell how. Us a no, joke, Dan. Yeah, d- yeah, yeah. D- d- don't ask him the next question. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, it's it's so interesting because I think now that it's it's just a different yeah. attitude to sort of content because all those things like. Yeah. Um, you know, like mm. Alex Cox's movie drone or whatever. They, they, they used to show sort of cult films and that sort of thing. It was kind of curated yeah, yeah, yeah. because there was a limited selection mm, of things. Yeah. But I suppose all those things which I watched sort of growing up when I was a kid, like... Um, and that was one which I only saw once called Phase 4, which is about ants. 
It's like ants becoming ants, intelligent. Yes. That's, that's quite nice because it's, mm. it's kind of like an elemental force, and also there's this sort of macro photography. But these ants kind of like, you know sort of they're, they're genuine ants, but they've sort of stuck things on them to make them. But yeah, that, I remember that being quite quite uncanny. That, I think that's on Amazon Prime. Yeah. Oh, okay. Prime, Prime Video. I think. I think Is it? And, and there were lots of yeah, films as well that, that they sort of like yeah. for some reason they were on loads when I was mm. quite small. And then they weren't on TV for about 20, 30 odd years. And then they sort of came back again. Like, like Logan's Run. I remember seeing Logan's Run endlessly oh, yes. when I was a kid. And then it wasn't on TV until I was yeah, about sort of 25 yeah. again. And then it's like, oh, yeah, oh it's Logan's yeah. Run. I remember this. It's just kind of, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so all those kind of yeah, slightly dystopian sort of 70s, uh, mm. 70s things which you sort of grow up with. And you sort of, you're not aware about quite how sort of odd some of them are, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You don't quite yeah. get the point of them when you're yeah, a kid, they, yeah. They, they were all kind of bleak until Star Wars came out, and then suddenly yes. say, "We got to ditch everything. We yeah. got to put in laser beams. Yes. We got to have a laser shootout." Yes, that that yeah, that, that genre it. that uh, yeah. Johnny Morris, the uh, the wonderful um, big Finish and Doctor yeah. Who writer, yeah. describes mm. as disco sci-fi, that kind of uh, <laughs> Buck Rogers in the twenty first century, twenty first century, and so forth. Because yeah. yeah. then we get things like yeah. Buck Rogers in the twenty first yes. century, yeah. And, uh, yeah. 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 a bit of Battlestar Galactica, yes. and stuff like that. Which yeah. is, when I was a kid growing mm. up, I, I just wanted more and more of that kind mm. of stuff. You know, I just, I just loved it. It was great. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, enough of that wibbly mm. wobbly. We do have um, one question here, mm. which is also from our Facebook, and this is the one Jeff, with his distorted voice, said, "Do not ask." But I'm going to ask it anyway. So, stuff Ian likes, um, who does send us quite a few questions, actually, doesn't he? Yes, um, he's says, pretty good. Yeah, he goes, which Doctor Who monster would Strax find it most satisfying to shoot, do you think? <laughs> oh. Strax, I never knew he was so violent. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Ian or Strax? <laughs> Ian. <laughs> it's kind of scaring <laughs> me right there. I mean, I, I, Ice Warriors are cool, so I'd like to zap an Ice Warrior. That'd oh, be great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. In terms of the classic monsters, the big four. But in terms of my mind, big four are so like yeah. Daleks, Cybermen, Suntarans, Ice Warriors. And then, of course, the yeah. Zygons have sort of, you know, yeah. become sort of like quite popular as well. Mm. But they're, they're, so they're, they're great as well. Yes. But, uh, yeah. but, Do you know what? Yeah. Uh, there's, there should mm. be um, Strax mm. fights. It, that's a series <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Just it's short. Strax down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, WWF it's, Strax, it's Strax like down. Fight yeah. Club. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. imagine it. Yeah. A big, bold graphic. Going, <laughs> Strax <Yeah>. down. <laughs> Strax down or something. Yeah. yeah. Different ways yes. of, of getting rid of. Various yeah, monsters, yeah. panels, I mean, of a really movies. uncanny one. The thing is, the actual sort of the, the, mm. the, the way in which they're realised in the original story isn't sort of like yeah. isn't sort of amazing. It, it, it is of its time, but uh, the um, the tractators in front of us. I remember finding them really uncanny, yes. like a woodlouse, but with a yes. sort of human face. I mean, that's yeah. a really horrible yeah. combination. That kind of. Yes. And I remember the novel is quite graphic in terms of mm. how. Very. Graphic. Yeah, there's there's much yeah. more sort of body horror in it as well, but that's kind of. Um, yeah. But that's that. I mean, that's, that's they have a, that yeah. machine, don't they? Which yes, which has made it a bits through, of bodies. And they yeah. Wire up body yes. Parts yeah. 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 It's yeah. Grim. Yeah. Yeah. And on TV again at sort mm. of five o'clock in the evening. It, it, <laughs> it it's the like ideas which sort of like make you go, "Whoa!" Oh, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sometimes yeah. that's the yeah. worst, isn't yeah. it, than, than seeing something? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I tell you, I, I, I love Frontius. Honestly, yeah. if we ever get hold of Chris Bidmead, then I'm going <laughs> to pin him down. Yes. And uh, we're going to have a big discussion about that. Jeff can go off and get the bread and milk and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, also, we'll I, bring you yeah. on for that, Dan. If we get hold of him, we'll oh, bring yes. you on so you can have a chat with him as well, and we can ask him about the track theatres. Yes, yeah. but I love them. I love the Mara that. as well because that was another thing where, so like, you know, the Doctor's friends are possessed yeah, and so like, yeah. something as simple as having a red mouth and red eyes. There's something really that's really uncanny. And so again, because I was very young yeah. watching that, but that was whole thing that was just at the edge yeah. of what's frightening enough to be. It's it's mm. the the frightening the exciting level of frightening not that something where you're terrified yeah, but just yes. it's it's frightening yeah, in a good but, way so that's kind of a, that's a good yeah. description for it, the ex, the exciting though I remember mm. showing my son yeah uh, he's eight showing him something mm. from Jody's era a little while ago and someone was turned to particles and he went <gasps> hey, mm -hmm. they, they just shot him you know but you could tell he was a bit like oh, yeah you know it was sort of, of like it, exciting yeah, exactly, yeah scary, it's bearable you, don't, you know yeah, yeah that's good yeah yes. exactly yeah. that's it it's bearable yeah um so dan we've got we've got one or two uh, questions and we've got a little game okay. uh, that we'd like to we'll finish to play with, with the game Lovely. Yeah. yes um mm. so um uh, what are you working on at the moment? At the moment, well, inevitably there will be. I can't remember because the the release schedule is very different from the recording yeah. schedule. But there will be f big finish stuff on the way. Actually, you know, Yay. come come October, there will be a new Patagos mm. Paternoster Gang volume. Um, it hasn't been. It has the story titles haven't been announced yet, but there is one that I've written in it. So, uh, so oh, yes, well done. fantastic. So, that'll be good. so I, th I think I think I'm allowed to say that. 
Um, but yeah, more more, uh, more Victoria <laughs> yeah, stuff. Now. Yes, and also yeah, yeah. again, I think because yeah. the press release yeah. came out today on the day of recording, um, in Ali Pali, I think it's on the 9th of September. I will be in Quatermass Live, mm-hmm. which Toby Haydock Ooh. is organising. It's got Mark Gators in it and Alice Lowe. Um, at, the, at, at, the, at the moment, at the, at the time of recording, yeah. this, this announced cast, but it's kind of a, uh, it's a, it's a reading of, um, a rehearsed reading of um, the very first Quatermass series, because it's the 70th anniversary today as we're recording, yeah, so it's kind of it like, it's all, it's all very yeah. exciting. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah. so I, I'd seen someone on Twitter had mocked up, do you remember Doctor Who Adventures magazine? Oh, They'd mocked yeah. up a Quatermass Adventures version, <laughs> you know, in, in the very, yes. did you see it, in yeah. the same yeah. sort of style, yeah. 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 Um, so last year, I went to see Colin Baker in a stage performance of Hannah oh, Baskervilles, yeah, okay. which yeah. was done sort of... Like, like a radio um, play. I said to Paul, like, yeah. yeah, it was like a big Finnish live kind yeah. of thing, you know, the girl yeah. had coconut things yeah. and, you know, the gravel and stuff and that. So is is, is your Quatermass mask going to be similar I to that? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know yet, because um, I, I, I know that it's, I know it's, it's based on the original shooting scripts, so I, I don't know quite how much... What, yeah. what the technicalities of it would be, but um, but yeah, that's that's yeah. that's uh, it's at Alexandra Palace, which the original series was um, serial was uh, broadcast from yeah, as well. So yeah, that'll be very exciting. Yeah. Yes, very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. Um, so um, uh, have I'd, you... I'd love quarter quite So if you haven't seen that, Jeff, sorry mate, the, the, the old the old black um, and white from I, I I haven't seen that one, but there was a, a remake, wasn't there? Um, not that long yeah, ago. Yeah, was mm. quite a mass in the pit was on the iPlayer for a little while, which I think is the third quite a yeah, 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 which is which is it's, great. Which it's, it's, it's inspired so much Doctor Who as well, you know. So Nigel Neal Nigel yeah, was quite missed. I think some some stories <laughs> did take his concepts and ran with them, shall we generously say? But um, yeah. yes, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's just got a really mm. creepy atmosphere. You'd love it, Jeff, because it's really, yeah. really yeah. spooky. Yeah, and I tell yeah, you what, I, lo- I love mm. a bit of spooky mm. who the, the, thing that, like the thing that got me, actually, mm. was the end of it. The, the, the mm. last two, definitely the last episode, but in the build-up to that, when everything's all kind of freaking out around yeah. London, it's just suddenly it seems to just take on another level of, of weirdness. Yeah, and, and it's extraordinary. It's, it's, in, it's so... In but, 50s. Yeah, and just, just in a set, it's not, not quite going out live, that one isn't, but so like, mm. it's all just mm. conviction. It's just kind of like... Black and white things. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's got it's got a great cast. Yeah. It's got Julian Glover in it as well as a as a sort of a, as, a, as a fantastic yeah military mm. man. But it's 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 it's, it's just mm. it's just done with conviction. It's it's like um I remember um, on the fiftieth anniversary mm. of Doctor Who um, attending a screening of uh, in public of uh, the very first of an, of an unearthly child and sort of uh, watching that. And oh, the thing yeah. is, again, it's you know the the technique of yeah, the might be, might be very basic, mm. but it's just kind of like, it's all done. You know, even with the cavemen, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like they they all really mean yes. it. Yes, you're right. They, they're all taking yeah. it seriously, and that sort of and that's that, mm. that that really sort of that that sings through, even though sort of like the actual the actual sort of yeah, it's it's so it yeah. it, it, it yeah. pulls you in as a yeah. viewer, doesn't it? Because you become yeah. engaged with it, because you feel it, because it's it's transmitting through. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I, I, I do mm. wonder sometimes whether that's a thing that is mm. that's been slightly diluted with, with you know with so much stuff that is presented on screen. You know, there's literally nothing now with a bit of CGI mm. and, a, and a good budget. Yeah. That you cannot yeah. imagine and show, and it's great mm. because it's all sense of wonder. I mean, you look at some of that stuff and you think, "Oh my goodness, it's amazing!" Yeah. But you are literally shown it. Whereas I think sometimes with stuff where they don't have that, and this is, I think, one of the reasons why I meant the Doctor Who so much because mm. you know, it's it's you you feel it. Yeah. You know, you feel yeah. it in your bones. Yeah. The, the the terror that someone's mm. you know reacting to or, or showing or, or something. Mm. You know, in, mm. like you said, the conviction it, it just gets you and it grips you and it pulls you into the story. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think it, it, I it, think. it has, and also especially with those early sort of things, it has it has a debt to theatre. You know, it is like, it is that kind of. I think yeah, it's very yeah, contained, yeah. and it's yeah. and it's a small screen. That's the point of it. It's intimate. It's in the corner of the living room, yeah, and it's sort of like yeah. and it's and it and it, and it is sort of, especially something like Quatermass. It, it's it's atmosphere, and it's sort of like mm. yeah, it's 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 very it's very different. Yeah. I think uh, it's not it's it's its, it's own it's its own thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, mm. But it is good. We, we do yes. Like it. Yeah. Do you know, I, I, my uncle is he's a big Doctor Who fan mm. as well, and I remember him talking about Quatermass and, mm-hmm. and saying, you know, I needed to check it out. So yeah, at some point, I'll do it, Jeff. Yes, dig it out somewhere. Mm-hmm. See if must. I can stream it. Simply mm. must, darling. Um, yes. So uh, before we go to our little mm. game, which I'll let Paul explain in a moment, Dan, <gasps> I just wondered if you'd if you'd been in Cardiff lately for anything. I haven't. I haven't. No. No. Even really? if, if even if I were, I couldn't say. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. See, he does say you've got to watch out for him, Dan. He's, he's yeah. a bit yes. of a ninja when it comes to landing those sort of questions. What? One day we'll catch someone off guard. <laughs> and, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, and on that day, my friend, we get sued. So yeah, yeah. Just yeah. watch it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> okay, shall we play our little game to close out with then? Should we yes. do this, right? This is you're gonna love this, Dan. I'll tell you, mate. You're gonna absolutely okay. love it, right? Okay, this is the game which we play uh, with uh, quite most of our guests now, and it is called yeah. the Grand Serpents Asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you recall at the end of Doctor Who colon flux. flux there was um, <laughs> um uh, the, the grand serpent the evil wrongdoer who'd been um, mm. you know sort of making his presence felt throughout various stories mm. in a manipulative machiavellian sort of way was banished to an asteroid in lonely silent space where there was nothing not even a tv right. just a door and even that was taken away from him so um, sorry to say this, mate. We are going to banish you upon that very asteroid, but we're not so we cruel are. as the Doctor. We will give you some things <clears throat> that you can take with your with your person. So, however, it's going to be a choice, and you've got to take one or t'other or something. Right. right. So here we go. The first thing you can take with this, uh, oh, actually, which is quite absolute, the first thing you are allowed to take is one science fiction movie. Now, what's it? Go- going to oh, be gosh. time bandits yeah i know that's a good choice that's telly fancy but yeah that's that's, kind of that's an absolute comfort watch drink my water sorry no <laughs> time bandits that's uh yeah I, I just lifted my water up too much because i thought i need to, I need to drink the water and <laughs> yeah it pe- people normally like, take okay, a moment to think yeah <laughs> yeah they do don't they go oh, no that, that would make me happy what, what can i do yeah Oh, I love Time Bandits. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant, isn't it? It's um, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good one. We can have Time Bandits. Okay. Um, yeah. Although this might banj actually you slightly, you're also allowed one fantasy. Movie. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 oh. oh gosh, fantasy movie. Unless you want to do Time Bandits as the fantasy movie, because mm. it does kind of cross into that. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, mm. I don't think I could spend eternity watching Hawk the Slayer. So. Uh, I might say. <laughs> and why <laughs> Commendable not? Commendable though it is. Fine, um, <laughs> yeah. Actually, okay, I'll take, I'll take the fantasy of Time Bandits then. That, 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 that's, that's good. Um, mm-hmm. And oh, what science fiction film? Oh, God, if I'm stuck by myself, then sort of like. Uh... See, now I can drink loads of water. I don't need it now. Yeah. yeah. The thinking okay. has begun. Hmm. 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 For audio it's tough, only. Isn't yes. No, sorry, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm cogitating. I'm cogitating. Um, <laughs> he is cogitating he's... rather deeply yes. on this very question. Or I take, I stick with or... Sign Bandits as science fiction, and I take okay. Jabberwocky as my fantasy film. So two oh, Terry Gilliams. Terry, you, but, you um, got, yeah, you got yeah. a thing for Terry Gilliam then. Yeah. So, so Although, just yeah, yeah. Sim- <laughs> so simply, if I'm in the unhappy situation of being in that kind of thing, then I want a comfort watch, mm. and those are both two of my sort of happy place films that I've seen yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. more than anything else. Yeah. But um, yeah, and they're yeah, actually two of his happier sort of films, which is kind of weird. Isn't yeah, I mean, it? obviously they, Brazil is great, happy. but it's like I probably wouldn't watch that when I'm stuck by myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's that's really yeah. going to bring the mood yeah. down yeah. On, yeah. on an asteroid on your yes. own. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, especially when you get to the end and they're in that big yeah. cooling tower and uh, it's hmm. you think, oh no, I'm and I am in lonely space, surrounded yes. by nothing but stars and and yeah. nothing. Um, right, you. Oh, oh God, or Excalibur. Oh no, where would Excalibur come in? Oh, no, 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 no. I've made my, I've made my choice now. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, you might as well go the whole hog and just have Zardoz. Why not? There we go. Yes. <laughs> I won't quote things because this is a family podcast, so uh, no. Indeed, it is. Yes, yes. we don't do that sort no. of thing. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah, now my, my eyes did pop out of my head the first time I watched it. I thought, oh, this looks good, doesn't it? Yes. Can I watch it, Mum? And my mum was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, you step watch it. Oh, like, oh. Yes. Oh, 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 yes. Dear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. You are also allowed one musical album of your choice. What's it going to be? Oh, gosh. Okay. Mm. What musical album? One album, only one mind. That's it. So it's got to be the one that you can literally listen to endlessly. We will even give you a system to play it on as well, and some speakers. See, we are quite generous, really. Aren't we? So- solar power. Gosh, there's so many things yeah, which I would, yeah. you know, enjoy listening mm. to. But again, if they get me in the right mood, you know, it's a kind of thing. I, know. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, so what like, mood yeah. would you need to be on if you're if you're isolated on an asteroid in the lonely depth of endless space? Something I can jump around to. Um, Probably not David Bowie. Yeah, no, no. House, House of Pain. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so like London Calling by The Clash, which is obviously a double album, and there's lots of tracks on there. That'd be nice to sort of jump mm. around to. Yeah, I was going to say that, that double album yeah. should be allowed here. Yeah. yeah. Get get you around that. Me some other favourites, but yeah, the, the Raven by The Stranglers, but something like that. Uh, 
mm. which is again it's like a, a fun one that's quite that's quite brief or oh, something well something jazzy that just be so like relax me somewhat <laughs> oh, um, jazz. So, yes great great nice Sydney Beche who <laughs> think maybe think about that but um I don't know <laughs> Oh, I'll, I'll say London Calling because I can't. I can't think of anything else at the moment. So yeah, and PJ Harvey, I love. But so again, it's probably so sitting listening to PJ Harvey with myself on a desert island might not be sort of a, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll, 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 say, I'll say London Calling because it's got it's got some it's got some things okay. I can I can dance That's to. A good one. Okay, yes. so just a couple more mm. things we'll let you take. We'll mm. also let you take one precious thing from your childhood. Oh childhood. God, mm. precious thing from my childhood. My cat Esme. Oh. Yeah, Esme cat. <laughs> was she was she your first cat? Yes, yeah. She was old. Yeah. She was older than me, so yeah. She she would keep me company. Mm. She was useless as a, as a cat, but fantastic as a pet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Esme cat. Yeah. Bless Esme. Yes. What, what sort of cat was she then? Was a she fat, big fat ginger cat. Black and white. Though? Yeah. Big fat ginger. Big fat ginger. <laughs> ginger cat with amber eyes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, bless. Yes. Gorgeous. Very Gorgeous. very placid. Okay. And the last. Was she really? Not a hunter. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. You bring it to me, darling. Yes. I am not moving. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So the last thing you are allowed is you are allowed one <laughs> Doctor Who prop um, lifted from the set, or maybe which fell into your possession by unknown means. And, I, and I'm also yeah. going to throw in you allowed one season of Doctor Who to take. Oh, as well. okay. And that. Right. On, so, on whatever me- media you choose. <laughs> Or a prop that you just like the look of, and you wish it had kind of fallen into your hands mm. in some way. <clears throat> could be, could be a neck collar. You know. I'd, <laughs> I'd have to be boring and just go for. Movement. I think I'd just go for the TARDIS because that would make me sort of, you know, that would give you this like the, the illusion of I can yeah. go anywhere, I can escape. There's a kind yeah. of thing, and it's just like. But a, it would just be a box. I escape. know, but it's a symbol of hope, isn't it? It's that kind of. Yeah, that kind of yeah. So that's uh, that's nice. And season, well, I think. Hmm. Oh, See this, this, this is one way you think. Yeah, because I know what my favourite mm. season is, mm. and you think. But then there's this one, mm. and then there's that, and that's mm. got that in it. And mm. yeah, it's it's yeah, yes. <laughs> oh, I might go for season fourteen, so the, of the classic season series. Fourteen. Season fourteen, yeah, possibly. Or I might go for a. Like, um, I, think, I think that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, I'll, I'll say I'll say that. That's a, that's just got a general sort of like. A, yes, although you know the one that I saw sort of like which which hooked me was probably <laughs> was probably sort of like a season nineteen, Beast Davison's first season. But so I know I'll go see go go for season fourteen. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Season also, because I love Sylvester, is, Sylvester's yeah. sort of like seasons, but obviously they're only mm. four stories long, so you're not you, you, there's, there's, yeah, there's, sure. there's not much, there's yeah. much chance to escape. Yeah, you're d- doing yourself so, yes. a disservice yeah. there, you know, you to, to take one of because yeah. it's short. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 if, is... and, do, and if I get another film, uh, which isn't yeah. genre, it isn't science fiction, then um, I'll go for the Third Man because that's my favourite film ever. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Sadly, that's not allowed. No, um, never mind. I'd think you about can, it. You can dream. I, I can probably recite. You can replay and also, in the back I, I can. I can re- of your mind. And I can recite quite a lot of blazing saddles. So that's kind of a. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yes. That's it. There yeah. you go. So yeah. Okay. So that's interesting, actually. So season fourteen, Pyramids of Mars, is it? Uh, Planet of Evil, that sort of thing. Brain and Morgan. No, 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 no. The one after that. Is season fourteen. So it's. The one it's after yes. That. It's the. Uh, Yes. Is, it, is it on the collection? Yes, it's got this on the collection. Oh, so yeah, it's, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it's it'll it's, be um, robots of robots of death, yeah. face of evil. Yes. Um, mm. Yes, thirteen was um, yes. the brain and Morbius yeah. and stuff, wasn't it? Because twelve was Tom Baker's first. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just a year behind. Yes. Like I said it's it's getting late, Dan. Do you know that? Oh no, I know. I know. Yeah. Time's a time so winging chariot drawers yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. indeed, indeed. Yes. If I was young man these days, mm. there'd be no stopping me. I'll tell you, I'll be mm. able to recite every single Doctor Who story there that had ever been there. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> every single one, yeah. I'll tell you. It used to be in the main. I'll get to sleep these days. Oh, yeah. God, blow me. It isn't. Anyway, right. Okay. Um, it's time to wrap it up then, I think, gents. Um, and we are mm. going to be seen out by uh, Field Marshal Eggsteak. <laughs> Thank you, Dan Starkey, for joining us on this Who Corner to Corner. Um, uh, may you have a pleasant onward journey and not be nuked from orbit by any uh, uh, missiles that just happen to be falling down from our military exercises. <laughs> Santa. <laughs>
Santaha. 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 Dan Starkey, thank you so, so much thank for joining you, sir. us. It's been an absolute delight pleasure. and a pleasure. And uh, wish you all the very best in uh, in your future projects and everything else that yes. you're doing. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much.